Hi, I am Himan Shupan. In this video, I am going to discuss Vapnik Chervonenkis or in short VC dimension. VC dimension is an important concept in the area of statistical learning theory and machine learning. It gives indication of performance of learning machine in terms of machine capacity. I will try to explain this concept in a simple and logical way without involving much of mathematics. So before diving into the formulation of VC dimension, let's have a look at basics and motivation behind it. Let us start with a basic classification problem. Suppose I am having two dimensional data with two features, x1 and x2. Based on the features x1 and x2, this data can be labeled into two classes, class 1 and class minus 1. As we can see, these classes are linearly separable. It is a very basic kind of classification problem. Based on the data set, we can define a straight line that classifies the two classes. Equation of a line is given by fx equal to 0 and it's a function of x1 and x2. As this classifier is defined by a straight line, it's a linear classifier. Data from two classes are used for formulation of classifier, so these patterns are called training set. As classification boundary is defined by fx equal to 0, for any pattern in class 1, fx will be greater than 0. And for any pattern in class minus 1, fx will be less than 0. Once classifier is formulated, it can be used to classify unseen data patterns. If the value of fx for unseen data is less than 0, it is labeled as class minus 1. And if greater than 0, it is labeled as class 1. Suppose this is our unseen data set or unseen data. Since value of fx is less than 0, in this case it is correctly classified as class minus 1. Now we are in a position to define two quantities. Number 1, training error. Number 2, test error. Training and test errors are nothing but inaccuracies of a classifier during training and testing phase. So which error is more important? Since during training phase, classifier learns the distribution of data, low value of training error is required. But ensuring low value of test error is essential as test error governs the behavior of classifier on unseen data patterns. Let's make our case interesting. Suppose in a training data set, a wild data of class 1 appears due to some manual or measurement error. In our case, we can easily visualize this data as an outlier and eliminate from our training data. But in real world cases, this is a bit difficult. Because real world data is high dimensional, say 10, 50 or even 1000 dimension to deal with and complex in nature. So let's just assume that we have to go with this data in our case and use it in training. Now this data will be misclassified with our linear classifier and our training error will no longer remain zero. Of course it will increase to some value. Let us say I want to reduce my training error to zero and for this purpose I use a stronger classifier of higher capacity and complexity. In our case, suppose I use a quadratic function instead of a linear one and as a result training error is reduced to zero. But when I use this classifier with unseen test data, they are wrongly classified. As you can see, all three test patterns will be labeled as class 1 by the classifier as opposed to class minus 1, where they really belong. It means improving in training error not always improves test error. And second, increase in machine capacity may result in poor test performance. Also, when I compare performance of linear classifier with quadratic classifier, it shows that performance of linear classifier on test pattern is better than quadratic classifier because linear classifier will label test pattern correctly as minus 1. One more thing, test performance depends upon the region 
from where the test data is picked. If we pick test data from this and this region, test performance for both classifiers will be same. Points to remember. Number 1. Always look for test error along with training error. Number 2. Improving on training error not always improves test error. Number 3. Increase in machine capacity may result in poor test performance. Second and third points are related. It means as we increase machine capacity, say hidden neurons in neural networks, at first test error will reduce, but after a point it will start to increase. This is also known as overfitting. When classifier performs good on training data but badly on test data. And number four, it is difficult to estimate true test error of a classifier. So here's the big question. How to ensure a low test error value for a classifier? Is there any mean, any relationship that gives the value of test error without actually checking classifier performance on test data? Fortunately, answer is yes. The equation shown gives the probabilistic upper bound on test error with probability 1 minus nita in terms of training error, training sample size and a term which is related to the capacity of machine. In this equation, m is training pattern size and c is related to capacity of machine and is known as wapnik Chervonenkis or VC dimension. Second term in the right hand side of the equation is known as penalty term which is imposed on test error due to complexity of learning machine. As the VC dimension of a classifier increases, this term will increase and consequently upper bound on test error. Also for a fixed training error and training sample size, test error only depends upon the VC dimension of a classifier and that's the importance of VC dimension. If we plot training error, complexity term and test error, with VC dimension for a fixed training sample size, it can be shown that as we increase VC dimension, training error will reduce as shown in orange plot. While penalty term shown in red increases with VC dimension. Upper bound on test error shown in blue first decreases and after a value of VC dimension shown as CO, it increases. For an efficient classifier, it is necessary that the value of test error should be minimum. To achieve this, we have to limit VC dimension such that sum of training error and penalty term is minimum. This problem is also known as structural risk minimization or SRM. All said and done, but one question still remains. How we are going to calculate VC dimension of a classifier to estimate penalty term and upper bound of test error? Unfortunately, answer is not very simple. Let's stop here and in the next part, we will see how we can calculate VC dimension of a classifier. Thanks for watching.